Um, now keeping moving into slightly more complicated style of um, of using Hackle, but a great way of either if you've got good showing of grasshoppers or um, uh, big stone flies, um, this is a great option and it's worked doesn't work hasn't worked so well for me in the UK um, but certainly in Europe and and especially America and New Zealand this fly is, is absolutely devastating and this is the stimulator here we have um, the partridge's sedge hook and um, so the K12 ST uh, in a size 10 uh, so this is a big hook um, this is even bigger than the 10 that we just tied on um, but when you've got big grasshoppers around you obviously need an equally big fly to tie uh, hook to tie on again we've got the white 18 nano silk thread turns to begin with aren't too important just making sure that you get a reasonable base on there taking out the tag ends and make sure that you light a reasonable thread base all the way to just past the barb of the hook and uh, just lay a few more turns there and now we're going to take a very pale um, pale young deer hair and um, this is I like this because of its lightness but it's worth tying these if you're fishing this fly for stonefly uh, then you obviously want quite a dark fiber um, particularly for the wing and but this is the tail so we don't want too much it's a small handful of fibers trim that out and you want to take out any under fur that might be in there and use your faithful deer stacking tool just drop those in just out of screen like that. and then hopefully all the fibers are roughly the right length Take them out, always take them out as close to the hook as possible and face in the direction that you want, just so you're not messing about trying to turn them around once you've got them all the right length. One dodgy fibre in there, always the way. Oh, that's got him. Right, he's out. So now just a short deer hair tail on there so to tie in deer hair we want to hold it tight do the loop over but not put too much pressure down at first and I'm just taking a few thread turns forward so I should to take that out it's a little bit longer than I was hoping If it's not quite right, don't panic. You've always got the chance to just undo what you've done and start again. Right. The only downside with deer hair is you don't want to put any pressure on at this point. Otherwise, all the fibers will just splay out and then they become very difficult to contain and get back into where the position that you want them. So, just taking this up. The reason I'm tying this in is that it's laying the foundations of the body for later on. So only up to about there. Right now you'll see them all splay out, which is fine. Because we're just going to stroke them all back if I want to. And just trim all of those out. And now we're going to just trap all of that down you can put pressure on that now because it can't splay out 
just careful around the tail area so you're not putting too much pressure on that all I do on this hook is lay one thread turn behind and put one back just so it kicks out from the hook and now I'm going to put in a rib material which for this particular flight this is just a one mil one mil gold wire rib and downside of the simplify it can sometimes be a bit slippy uh, with wire materials oh, that back in there. Right, that's trapped in then we're going to add in you guessed it a grizzle hackle I don't want this to be I want it to stick out too much but I always want it just to come out a short way not even go even finer than that have I been able to do that keep looking But this is just laying the foundations of a body so I'm not looking for it to give me that's better uh, I'm not looking for it to give me great length of fiber I'm looking for it to give me volume of small fibers to offer buoyancy so you'll notice that if I shut that down never quite do what you want the longer fibers are at the bottom and the shorter ones are at the top and tying this particular fly I want the shorter fibers at the back end of the fly and longer at the front so to tie this in you can just lift those fibers out they're all going to face the wrong direction of course um, but stroking those back and I'm going to tie this in by the tip just on one side tip facing forward and the rest of the feather facing backwards try and keep that to the same side as much as possible so got that strap down take the thread back quite a lot going on with this particular fly and then we're just going to lay our um, uh, lay our body down which for this particular flight it's going to use a, a tan it's a very sort of olivey grey uh, colour that's super fine again it's, it's just to offer you enough colour that's going to shine through um, through that hackle um, but as much as possible it's a, it's a bed for that hackle to sit on We'll take that forward, doesn't need to taper forward too much because the hackle's going to do a lot of that work. Just needs to make sure it's touching turn. See so again if it's a stone fly you might want to use a, almost an orange, a hot orange to have shining through because uh, quite often you'll get that hot orange underneath the wings. Just a little bit more to cover where we cut the deer hair off. Right. Hackle plier time. Now click this down. Make sure we haven't caught that rib material. And It's going to be inevitably when brushing those back you're going to get some fibers that get trapped facing the wrong way that's okay nice open turns keep them consistently open as you take the hackle forward and you see it's giving you that nice 
spiky body. So keeping them, keeping them going. Make sure of the feather. Key here is to make sure that you've used a nice long feather. Um, there's no point using a short feather that's going to run out halfway along. Right, one more turn up, and as before, take our thread through. Generally, always do it on the top side of the fly because that way um, you know when you're cutting the hackle out, you're not cutting anywhere near your thread, which is vitally important. It's a horrible feeling when you watch your hackle unwinding itself. And it does happen, unfortunately, quite a lot. Right, here's the rib. So the rib actually goes through the hackle and it goes the opposite way. So the downside with this is you will catch a reasonable amount of fibers. But the positive is it will trap those hackle turns down. So if you hook a toothy trout, the fly doesn't just unravel after one fish. So as I'm taking this through I'll just wiggle and that will just help just shift any fibers that are thinking about getting caught but will move out the way um, and then you don't trap too many down just a couple more of those coming forward and again just take your Thread through and in front. So with wire, again, as you'll notice in old other videos, just rotate it and it will cut itself. There's no need to go in there with scissors and we'll tidy up this bit. You'll notice that there's still quite a lot of room. What I'm also going to do here, so just rotate that towards you a little bit. I'm going to cut a small section through the top area there uh, that will allow the next area when I tie the wing in um, just for it to sit nice so it's not getting pushed up by the hackle. You're not taking out too much and you're not taking out any on the on the fish's side of the fly. Um, so it's just a, a chance to make the wings sit a little bit neater. So we're taking the same deer hair. Cut scratching right here. So still that nice pale pale deer hair. Take out any of those under fur fibers. That can be problematic. Then the deer stacker them to even up and there we have it they're all level and then we want to try and try and match it up with so that it meets the end of the tail there uh, pop it in position throw your loop trap down and place your, always place your tighter turns going forward rather than going backwards and then looser turns going back and that will help hold its shape. Not bad now I've got a nice tight loop, tight turn all the way back here. Trim out 
we can tidy up a lot of this later but we want to trim out these little tag ends holding the thread out of the way this eddy that are longer than the wire of the hook so our thread turns and tidy that down let's see if we can Always stop talking when you're obviously doing those bits. There we go. I've got that bit neater there. So let's see how the wing's now been held together, and it's just by offering slightly more delicate turns over the top. Now, for a change of scenery, it's going to offer a slightly darker. Uh, Red game hacker if I got one suitable. Should be should well be perfect. A little bit long. So again I'm looking for a little bit longer than the body hackle. I don't need a, a long feather, I'm just looking for one. This is actually had the top cut off it anyway. Um, but the reason I'm not looking for a long feather is I, there's only three or four turns required at the front of the flight. As with the all the flies, slightly darker saw rat stub, and because of the build up of all the materials, it can be really quite a small amount just to get the core of the trim attack and the up and then we're going to get our hackle pliers in pull it forward that will just soften the feather up straight the fibers back put one two three cutting round might just be able to throw in an extra one So if I thread through and in front and then in with the scissors and just trim that out, stroke it back so we can do our tidying up with the thread, lengthen it off a bit with finish tool or hand finish if that's Preferred option. Pass the luck, and there you have it. The stimulator. You can add rubber lengths and various other things, but that's a, a great fly for fishing grasshoppers, terrestrial stonefly. Um, quite often, casting in at the banks, and big hungry brown trout will quite often come up and snaffle that up. Great hackled dry fly.